So this lecture is about the result of a survey that I conducted uh, during March to June of this year. So it's about municipal fiscal retrenchment and recovery in the U.S. So as in any lecture that I give, I always hope that by the end of it, you will find something interesting at least, right? Aside again from the free lunch. So this is the plan of the presentation. First, I will discuss you know, what data are available out there when we talk about city finances. I'm going to briefly discuss survey process that I followed as well as the design. This is just going to be brief and then I will actually present uh, selected findings from the survey. So when we talk about selected uh, findings from the survey, I'm talking about data that will help us un answer the following questions. No? How extensive was the budget crisis in major cities in the U.S. during and immediately after the Great Recession? Right? What did cities do to address the crisis? And what are the outcomes? No? Have cities recovered from this fiscal crisis that some of them might have faced during the Great Recession and immediately afterwards. So this survey is actually part of a bigger project that I am engaged in. So in the last five years or so, uh, I have this Municipal Fiscal Retrenchment and Recovery Project. This is actually a multi-method research project. It involves collection and coding of budget documents for cities analysis of data from census of governments and others produced by the Bureau of Census and of course my own survey and finally comparative case studies of cities involving interviews of city managers as well as budget and finance officers so I'm just going to present the results of the survey that I conducted myself so let's talk about city finances, data about city finances, right? And there was just this simple question that I wanted to ask. You know? So what happened to cities after the Great Recession? How are they doing? It's really a very simple question to ask, and yet when I looked at the data, I cannot find them, right? One very good source of data is something called the Comprehensive Annual Financial Reports. So when we talk about people doing research on local public finance, there's a preference for some would call objective data, which is administrative data. And a very good source of administrative data are CAFRs, or Comprehensive Annual Financial Reports, which gives a complete picture of city finances. Here are some of the limitations, the problems that I encountered when I tried to collect these types of reports. One, I found out one third of states do not require their local governments to produce these reports, right? which is not good news for <laughs> someone like me doing research on this area. <laughs> now for two thirds of the states, what's the problem? Well, some of those local governments which produce these reports, these reports are not really publicly accessible you have to file Freedom of Information Act requests in order to access them. So if you're talking about hundreds or even thousands of cities, that's going to be quite costly and it will require a lot of time in order to process this request. There are also classification issues. This is for accountants. Right? When you look at those reports, cities classify their fund structure, whatever is included in that fund, differently. right? Different services are categorized into different funds. They are not readily comparable. So you have to be aware of that when using this kind of data. The good news is that you have the Bureau of Census doing a lot of surveys of local governments. So you have, many of you are, of course, familiar with this, the Census of Governments, which happens every five years, years ending in seven and two. So the last one we have is 2012. Then you have the annual survey of state and local government finances. Now a very good development in the study of local public finance is an initiative 
by the Lincoln Institute in which they use some of the data here for their fiscally standardized cities database. I think that's a very good contribution here. Now, what I'm going to say might sound like a criticism of what they're doing. I assure you it's not. Otherwise, George and Anthony will kill, kill me afterwards, right? <laughs> this is just my own experience using this data from the Bureau of Census in the last 10 years. Right? I've been using it for a lot of years. One is timeliness, right? So the last census of government was conducted in 2012. Until now, the results for the individual files, for the individual cities, not the aggregate. You can, you can access the data for aggregates. The results for individual cities are not yet available, right? publicly available. Now, of course, you have the annual version, which they do every year when they don't have a full census of governments. That only covers a sample of cities. right? And even when you're talking about cities with population of 50,000 or more, not all are represented in the annual survey. And the last one, available for the annual survey, again at the individual city level, was at 2011. Now, George, I was quite surprised that you were able to do something for 2012. So you might have a special friend at the Bureau of Census. Right. I should talk to you afterwards. <laughs> And, of course, there is the issue of data accuracy, right? So when you examine data for Detroit, for example, you'll be surprised to find out that they're doing quite well, according to the Bureau of Census. So you have to double-check the data. Remember, it's a survey. So sur as in any survey, there is a possibility of you know, data inaccuracy. So given these issues about the existing data set out there, could it answer my simple question? What has happened to cities after the Great Recession? Five years after the official end in 2009, I still don't have any idea what happened to them. Right? So I decided, I'll just have my own survey. Right? I'll just have my own survey. So this survey is a male survey of municipal governments in the US with a population of 50,000 or more. The sample frame is based on the 2007 census of governments. It's based on the 2007 census of government because at the time of survey planning, I still don't have the 2012 census, census results. The targets, targeted respondents, appointed managers, budget and finance officers. And because the census does not include the names and contact details of these respondents, I have to do an internet search of their contact details, names, and position. This was implemented early this year from March to June. So the survey is actually based on a model, yeah. and this model in turn is based on a review of the li related literature. So in this model, we see the fiscal retrenchment is described as a process, a process that involves the formulation, adoption, and implementation of what we call retrenchment strategies. So these are strategies that cities adopt in response to a crisis, budget crisis. And there's the expectation that when you have, when you have implement these strategies, you will see certain outcomes. Right? And this model argues that both the process and outcomes of fiscal retrenchment are influenced by what's happening within the city government, the internal environment, their fiscal policy choices. As George mentioned, the fiscal health of cities also <laughs> depend on the quality of their financial management process as well as their fiscal policy choices. That's also influenced by other organizational <laughs> factors as well as the presence of professional management. The model also sees this retrenchment process and its outcomes as being influenced by the city's external environment, including socioeconomic factors, state and other governments, and political actors, including citizens and other <coughs> constituents. The survey gathered information on all these variables identified in this model. So this will be a good source for a number of publications.